All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I see the numbers trickling in here. Um, so we're going to get started. We've got about 45 minutes. You'll see I, I've, there's three faces here that are far more exciting than my own Oztrek face. Um, just as a really quick introduction, my name is Anna. I work with Oztrek. I've been here for about four years now. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with Oztrek, some of you may be, some of you may have been at the uh, Rehab Sci 101 session before this, uh, but we are a Canadian organization. We work with 13 Australian universities and we send a whole slew of students into programs such as Physio, Cairo, which is our panel here, um, OT, medicine, dentistry, everything across the board. Our services are free. We have an admissions team to answer all your questions. So uh, definitely feel free to, to reach out anytime after this panel or throughout uh, by email or head back into that career echo chat room. If you do have questions throughout, this is going to be a pretty informal session. Um, we'd love to hear those questions from you. So I'd ask if you could type those into the chat on the side that public chat there that way we can all see the questions that come through um, and and we can kind of get going from there okay so uh let's get started quick introductions we've got bryce i've got bryce jesse and francis here um jesse is in her final year of her master's in chiropractic in australia francis is a flinders graduate and uh, currently practicing physio in adelaide right now and bryce is a bond dpt grad and he is back here in canada in vancouver so i'm gonna hand it over and actually i'll we'll start with, uh, with you bryce if you don't mind if you could tell us just a little bit about who you are where you studied what your experience was like in Australia and what you're doing now. That would be fantastic. Sure. Sounds good. Uh, hey guys. Uh, so uh, my name is Bryce. I am a physiotherapist working in uh, Vancouver. I right now work uh, at a primary care network in Richmond. So it's basically um, assisting the public health system with offloading um, the workload from physicians. So everyone we get is uh, a physician referral um, from the public system. So it's uh, kind of a, a publicly funded program. It's, it's really nice to work at. And then I also run my own business as well called Flash Physio. And I do telehealth uh, on the weekends. So I kind of work um, on my own time doing that. And that's just kind of small. Um, but uh, in terms of my schooling, I went to Bond University, which is in the Gold Coast of Australia, which is absolutely beautiful part of Australia. Um, lived there for about two and a half, three years while I was doing my uh, the DPT program. Um, after that, I tried to kind of move back to Canada as soon as I could just to be with family and things like that. So I went through the whole credentialing process in Canada, um, which I finished in 2017. And I started working on an interim license then in 2017 in Canada. Uh, started off again in the public system, working in like acute trauma and orthopedics, and then kind of transitioned to more private practice and kind of previously I've been working in uh, Pilates as well. So I'm trained in clinical Pilates. So uh, I was working in a clinic doing that as well. So yeah, that's kind of the brief summary. Um, kind of one of my favorite things about Australia is the, uh, I guess the, the difference in climate obviously is a big one. Uh, I'm in Vancouver, so it's just raining all the time and cloudy most of the time. <laughs> we got a little bit of sun today, which is rare, but Australia, we were having sunny days like 90% of the time. Where I was, I know in other parts of Australia, it's a bit different. Um, but it was definitely a huge highlight just being able to get outside and go swimming every day in the ocean and surfing and all that stuff. It's a lot of fun. Um, highly recommend trying it if you get the chance, even if you don't go, just to get the chance to see that area. It's beautiful. Yeah, and that's, uh, if you guys have any questions, happy to answer them. I was just saying before we started to Francis who's sitting in Australia right now I just I can see the sunshine and even oh. though it's you know you could be anywhere right but I just got this nice feeling because I knew you were in Australia and I'm like oh it's got to be a nice day <laughs> um Francis let's hop over to you and and you t share your story with us um I'll be saying good morning it's about nine o'clock here in Australia in Adelaide uh, my name is Francis I'm originally from Toronto Ontario and I did my undergrad at the University of Toronto and then um, after graduating, I wanted to pursue physio in Australia, and I applied to Flinders University in their Master's of Physiotherapy program. Uh, so I started that in 2019. I graduated end of 2020, and I've been working for as a physiotherapist now for about a year and a bit, a uh, year and a few months. And yeah, I love Australia. The weather's nice. It's a bit chilly in the morning now, so we just head into our autumn um, season. So the sunshine can be a bit deceiving, um, but it's, it's nice. A uh, little bit of heat um, 
And yeah, I love Australia with the beaches, um, going for runs around the beach. Um, the sunsets in the, uh, Adelaide is really beautiful. I think in the Gold Coast, you get more sunrise. So in Adelaide, you get more to the sunset. So the summer sunsets is amazing. Um, all my phone photos are all like sunsets. Um, yeah, that's pretty much um, my journey here. And I'm definitely open to asking, um, answering any questions you guys have about my experiences in Adelaide um, in the Flinders University Physiotherapy Program. Amazing, thanks Francis. Yeah. And Jesse, hop over to you. Um, hi guys, I'm Jesse. I'm originally from Vancouver, Canada. Um, I moved here to Australia. I'm in Sydney at Macquarie University. I moved here um, two weeks before COVID hit. So I moved here uh, February, 2020 and then COVID hit. And that was an adjustment in itself, you know, doing your master's um, in Cairo uh, during a pandemic, but it's been pretty good. And, you know, you make a lot of friends in uni. So that's a really good thing. Um, right now I'm currently in my uh, final year of chiropractic. So, um, our academic load is a little bit less. Um, we're in clinic a lot of the time, taking patients, treating patients, which is a really cool experience. Um, I finish up in December and I'm unsure of whether I'm gonna stay here in Australia or head home um, to Vancouver, but um, yeah, Sydney is interesting. It's been probably the rainiest summer they've ever had. Um, so I compare it. It's honestly like I'm living in Vancouver again. There's so much rain right now. This is like the one sunny day we've had in like a month, uh, which is nice. And yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have, but, um, I'm loving the experience and I don't regret it at all. Amazing. So, I mean, you have uh, Bryce, you and Francis, who are both, they have both chosen the physio route and Jesse with Cairo. Uh, maybe just to jump back over to you, Bryce, can you share a little bit more about your journey into physio? How did you decide this was, you know, the, the thing for you? Um, and how did you decide on Australia? Oh, yeah, for sure. I had a bit of a, a different path than most people. Mine wasn't as direct and linear. I graduated, uh, many years before I went to, to do the DPT program for my undergrad. So I, I had about six years of just working in various fields after I did my undergraduate degree. And I was kind of looking at the job markets and I knew that the, the job market for physio was pretty hot in terms of there's always jobs available, it's healthcare, it's publicly funded uh, where I am. Um, so there's a lot of kind of benefits to it. And I decided to go back to school and I went to a local uh, community college did all the stuff like the, um, what was it? The, all the math stuff I didn't do in undergrad the first time because I was having fun. I had to go back and do all that, like stats and everything. So I did all that. And then I just decided to apply to uh, both Australia and Canada because of the entry cycle, I actually got into the Australian university before I even got the results from Canada yet. And I kind of, at this time I was already an older student. I didn't want to wait anymore. So I just went for it. And that was pretty much it. It was kind of an impulsive decision to be honest. And I didn't know anyone, I've never been there. I didn't know much about the school. Um, there was really, I was kind of going in pretty blind. I was just kind of trusting my gut on it and I went for it and I don't regret it. And it was awesome and it was amazing. Um, I made a lot of friends who actually moved back to Vancouver. They're all from Australia now and they're, they're moving here or they have moved here. Um, so a large group of friends that I made there actually I've been with now for the last like five or six years. So that's been great. Um, yeah. So it's kind of an odd path for me. It wasn't one that was very linear. I didn't think about the kind of the, my life plan before I went through it. I just kind of followed my gut and then decided to go through with it all. So yeah, that's my story. Very interesting journey there, Bryce. Yeah, thanks. It's a bit of an odd one. <laughs> um, I'll seg yeah, I'll segue into that. Um, I guess mine is also not as linear um, as most people. And it took me about three years of applying through Austrac to get into school, into uh, physio school in Australia. So I um, graduated from my undergrad in 2015. And from there, I knew I wanted to study physio. However, it's just which school and uh, where, either in Canada or in Australia. Um, I also wanted to travel as well. So in a way, it was the best fit to apply in Australia. I wanted to expand my boundaries and really learn a different culture and I guess move away from home. And Australia applied to five different schools. And um, in 2018, 
Um, I worked that whole year, just been applying to uh, five different schools. And I got into Flinders University, which was one of the first schools that um, at that time, Austrek partnered up with. Um, so I'm sorry, Austrek partnered up with Flinders University at that time. So it was one of the first years that they started with. And I was recommended to apply there. And I didn't know anyone in that program. I didn't know anyone who came from that program. So I was similar, I was going in blind, um, trusting, you know, like, oh, I've been to Adelaide before um, in ho for holidays and I like the city and then applied and got in. So from there, everything um, what went smoothly, got my um, applications granted, my visa, loans and everything. And then next thing you know, three months after getting an uh, acceptance letter, I'm already in Australia. So there was a waiting period, but then at the end of it is when I got accepted, it was went by real quick. Um, and that was just before COVID. So in 2019, it was really a good opportunity for me to travel around Australia, got to see different sites, different cities, um, went to Sydney, went to Melbourne, went to Gold Coast as well. And I loved every part of Australia, really, especially the beaches, as I already mentioned that earlier. But um, and then in 2020, it was more of like a um, deciding year for me. Do I stay here? Do I apply for um, jobs here in Australia or do I move back to Toronto? Um, I think at that time, because I was already pretty planted in Australia and Adelaide, um, I decided to apply for jobs here and see where that ends, um, where I end up with that. And I think with the registration program here, um, after you graduate from physio, you don't have to do any board exams. You just uh, graduate. The uni does your registration to the governing body of APRA. That takes about a month or so. Uh, so after I graduated, enjoyed my summer for about a month and a half and then got a job, got my registration and started working from there full time. So I think the route and starting my career here was, um, personally for me was a good decision so that I can get, uh, get knowledge and experience right away as opposed to heading back home and waiting for that interim period of writing the board exams. Uh, but yeah, I think no regrets. I enjoy every experience and, um, that I've had so far. That's pretty much my journey here. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I we definitely want to jump over to you, um, Bryce, to talk about a little bit of your transition or experience coming back to Canada. But before we do so, um, Jesse, curious to hear about you and your choice. First of all, for chiropractic, how, you know, the that's growing in popularity, at least we're seeing on our end. And um, how how did you land in the spot that you are? Um, first, I'll just say they're cutting grass right outside my window, of course, like this is the time they choose to do it. So if there's a bit of background noise, I'm sorry. Um, so I did my kinesiology um, bachelor's degree at UBC. Um, and then I took some time off. I took like a year and a half off just because I knew I wanted to do either physio or chiro. I just didn't really know, you know, which one I wanted to do. Um, I'd worked in a physio clinic for years as like receptionist and really thought that that was the way I wanted to go. I think physios do unbelievable things. And it wasn't until I shadowed a chiro, um, a new grad chiro, and I was like, oh, wow, yeah, like this, this is, this is it for me. Um, and I say new grad because I think there's a lot of um, uh, a, a lot of um, what's the word like? Come on, my mind's blanking. A lot of um, mumbo jumbo surrounding old chiropractors. Like people have these preconceived notions about them, and I was one of those people. And until I saw that these new chiro grads were, you know, strictly evidence based, strictly science based and closing the gap between Cairo and physio. And I think that's a really great thing now is a lot of newer physios and a lot of newer Cairos are working together because we all have the same um, goal and long in patient care and everything like that. So I applied to um, the only Canadian chiropractic school and I didn't get in and I thought my life was over. And then two weeks later, I got the acceptance letter from Macquarie University here in Sydney. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do it. And I've been here and it's amazing. And it's just like the greatest thing is 
um, learning how as a Cairo you can benefit in working with physios and other allied healthcare practitioners with and end up with the same patient goals. And I just think that's like the coolest thing. And it just, it, it, I'm so passionate about it. And um, I, like Francis was saying, it's the same thing here. When you finish your degree, there's no board exams that you have to write to practice in Australia. Um, however, I am currently in the process of um, the, doing the Canadian board exams for Canada, just in case I do want to come back right away and start practicing in Canada. But yeah, that's been my journey. Amazing. Just one more quick thing, Jesse, because you brought up a, a bunch of really, really good points there, I think. Um, I don't know how much you can speak to this, but you know, for those students who are here who perhaps are looking at both Cairo and physio, you mentioned kind of the merging of the two in many ways. Um, but is there a distinguishing factor as to why, for example, you thought, yeah, no, I want to take the Cairo route as opposed to physio? Yeah, I just think Cairo's um, a bit more like, obviously, we do um, the more manipulations and hands on stuff. It's not to say physios don't do that at all, because they do. Um, but I personally was drawn to the hands on care and just the understanding of, you know, how everything in the body is super connected and the joint manipulation. And it, it's just, I think the hands on aspect is what really sold it for me. Not to say that physios aren't hands on because they definitely are. But I think Cairo's like our hands are where we obviously do all of our work and, you know, you get that crack and pop or whatever that everyone strives after. But um, I think that's what was sold it for me was just being able to do so much with my hands. Gotcha. Yeah, no, interesting. Very interesting. Um, I think Bryce, just to jump back over to you, I know this is a, a little bit going all over the place here, but can you speak more to uh, returning back to Canada? Francis mentioned and Jesse, the process of staying in Australia for physio and Cairo. What was yours like of returning? For sure. So um, what I did was a direct, like I basically finished my exams and then it left like almost immediately. So I was pretty quick into the turnover back into Canada. In hindsight, I would have liked to have probably stayed and worked for a year in Australia. That would have done me better if I had done that, worked for a year, gained experience there, done my credentialing in Canada, because then it'd be a quicker transition back. Um, but that's just my personal thing. Um, also, it's kind of a, a caveat here, but if you are ever interested in going to America to uh, eventually work and you're Australian trained, you do need APRA certification um, regardless. So I never had to get APRA certification because I went back to Canada. So now I'm trying to get APRA certification because I want to go to America. It's a huge pain in the butt. So that's just a caveat. But anyways, I would just stay there. This was my advice in hindsight. But uh, essentially when I came back, um, the now this has changed recently because the governing physiotherapy body um, had a huge pushback recently because of COVID. They basically had kind of bottlenecked the exam processing. Um, they weren't able to trans, uh, transfer the program over or the exam over to uh, do virtually, which they attempted on multiple times. Systems failed multiple times. They ended up basically not allowing a whole group of people um, to get their uh, licensing and credentialing just because of this uh, bottleneck. Um, so now that's going through a whole reform that everything I'm about to say might change. Um, but initially my process was first, it's a written exam. So it's a massive multiple choice um, exam um, and it's uh, pretty extensive. Once you do that and you, you pass it, you can then apply for an interim license. You can also apply before, but you have to have a physiotherapy vouch or a physiotherapist vouch for you and basically sign off on your notes. But you, there's lots of work opportunity on an interim license. Then you signed up for the uh, in-person exam. And that was the really intensive exam. That was the exam that everyone kind of mostly stresses about. That's the exam that they're kind of reevaluating now. I know uh, in Vancouver, UBC uh, was responsible for putting that on most recently. But before that, it was called CAPR, uh, Canadian Alliance for Physiotherapy Regulators. If you look at the reviews on Google, they've got like one out of five and a lot of very angry uh, comments just because of, of this huge backlog of students that couldn't work, couldn't graduate, and were basically stuck in limbo for two years, which is a very long time to have um, school debt and financial debt and not be able to do the job that you've been trained for and then being stopped by a credentialing body that's essentially not doing anything. 
So you can tell my uh, my bias is not <laughs> pro capper either. Um, so just a heads up that the, the exam process might change a lot since uh, I've taken it. So it is this year has gone through that transition. So this year will be kind of the, uh, the litmus test for what they're going to do for the practical exam kind of moving forwards. But yeah, that was, uh, that's uh, essentially my, my process of coming back to Canada. But there's lots of jobs where in, in Vancouver, at least. I'll latch on to that um, notion there. I think that was one decision why I decided to stay here in Australia after graduating is um, definitely gaining more experience and getting hands, hands on right away and just letting that pass until those that, I guess, bottleneck, bottleneck effect um, passes. So while that goes through, I'm working, I'm earning, and I'm learning really as well. The more that you uh, work, that's you learn as well through the patients that you see and different practices that you learn through the professional development at work. Um, so I'm, I do have plans to go back home in Canada to practice there as well, to be dual a citizen of uh, physio, uh, dual practice physio. Um, it's just really timing wise is when's best to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And you, you know, you're, you speak to gaining experience in Australia. I'm curious, both Bryce and Francis, if so far in your careers or throughout your training, have you identified an area of physio that you're most interested in? I know earlier this year we hosted, for example, a theatric physio webinar. Um, have you covered everything? Tell us a little bit more about that. Maybe Francis, start with you. Um, I guess speaking first in physio school, um, all my my notion of physio school was always like private practice MSK. And then when I got introduced to like neuro, um, neuro rehabilitation in physio school, as well as cardiovascular, I like, oh, I didn't know that physios also can do hospital work. I always had the notion of always private practice outpatient MSK. And I guess through physio school, I grew an interest in neuro rehabilitation through my various placement experiences. And I think with neuro I have more of a personal like knowing people that have gone through you needed neuro rehab and I'm like oh that's something I'd like to be able to um, gear towards and gain experience so then I can bring that back to the communities that uh, personal communities that I've been in so whether it be and gaining knowledge from there so that I can help out the, the, that niche community um, right now I'm working private practice and so still learning about the hands-on experiences um, private practice MSK. I also learned Pilates as well. I think Bryce mentioned that he's learning clinical Pilates. So through the um, my company, uh, we're learning Pilates through that, which is great. So I'd like to bring that back to Canada because when I in Canada, I didn't know about um, Pilates as a physiotherapy rehab tool. So that would be something I'm keen to continue to learn to bring back eventually. Um, yeah, I think Australia also has a really good sporting community. They have um, lots of sports here in summer and winter time, cricket, footy, um, netball. And just through my private practice experience, I'm learning about that sporting culture. So then I can learn more about sporting MSK as well and hopefully pursue um, a sporting physio and neurophysio um, down my career, down, down the line of my career. So yeah, those are two, uh, I guess, aspects of physiotherapy that I'm interested in um, pursuing later that later on. Right now, I'm quite general. I think as a first year, I just want to soak in as much knowledge as I can, learn about different patients, different presentations, and be a bit more specific as career goes on. Yeah. Yeah. The classic on mute. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Bryce, do you have anything to add to that? And um, actually, for you as well. So you completed the Bond DPT, which is one extra year, um, which has a little bit more clinical experience. But what what are your thoughts on you know your areas of interest and how you were prepared during the degree? Um, so I guess my area of interest has always changed. I, I don't tend to stay in the same area of work for more than a couple of years. So I kind of jump around. So um, I think that's been, I think that in terms of my education, we definitely got a lot of um, 
ample time to to try a lot of the different i guess like it's private practice public system but then also again like the, the more specific topics like neuro rehab cardiorespiratory musculoskeletal those kind of things that I, I felt pretty confident in um, after leaving Bond, but usually what ends up happening, so our last placement I think is three months. This is off of the top of my head. I can't really remember exactly. I think it's about three months. And in that placement, you um, are basically working for three months, shadowing people and working. So you tend to carry over whatever that three month term is. That's kind of what you leave with, if that makes sense. So when I left, I was doing private practice, um, or sorry, it was public, funded outpatient physiotherapy. So it was essentially similar to private practice in terms of one-on-one -on -one treatments, but it's publicly funded. So that's kind of the experience that I left with. And that was what I gained the most experience with. So that's kind of what I just started doing when I came back here. But then once being back, I did the, the clinical Pilates credentialing. I've done my IMS or dry needling certification. And then uh, the manual therapy stuff never really interested me very much. So I didn't go very far into that. Um, and that's pretty much where I am now. So every few years, I end up changing jobs anyways and going to a different sector. But mostly what I've been doing is mostly musculoskeletal based. I don't do much cardio rest or neuro rehab, although I do get stroke and Parkinson's patients coming to me regularly, but it's a bit different. It's not the acute uh, hospital world of neuro on that side of things. It's more general. Yeah, so it sounds like there's a lot of scope for different experiences once you're in the field, you know, and I, I like that idea of being able to change as well, not being stuck in a, a linear path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just to, to stick on you for another moment, Bryce, I'm picking on you. <laughs> there were a few more questions here, um, just about those board exams that you wrote. And you don't need to go into details. I'd say for sure. anyone who's here, pop back into Kuroko to ask the, these questions as well. But um, do you have any insight you can share on those exams? Um, yeah, so the exams, uh, in terms of the curriculum, so the Canadian curriculum system and the Australian curriculum that I was doing, so specifically at Bond, I believe Bond at the time was, uh, was uh, mirroring McMaster's program. So essentially what we were learning was very similar in scope to what we would need on the Canadian exams. We just had more of certain topics in Australia. So basically like cardiorespiratory wasn't a huge uh, workload on the Canadian exams, but in Australia, it's, uh, it's, you know, here we have respiratory therapists. So that scope of practice is a bit, little bit smaller. So essentially what I'm saying is that uh, with the examination material, we were already pretty set up for it. We had all the information that we needed in order to do that. Um, in terms of what topics are tested on the board exams, it's, it's, everything so they basically break it down um you know there's cardiorespiratory neuro there's musculoskeletal um and there's some other ones anyways i can't remember but they basically all of those will be hit there's different um weightings towards certain subjects so musculoskeletal is heavily weighted and i believe neuro is heavy heavily um uh, weighted. The cardio rest stuff is very basic and not heavily weighted just because of our scope of practices less uh, in Canada. Um, and then coming back to Canada, um, you know, after you graduate, so after you graduate, you have to get all of your coursework credentialed by the Canadian governing body. So that takes a few, like uh, it takes a while to do. Um, after it gets sent back to you, then you get approval to sign up for the exam, which has a wait list usually because they're backlogged a bit. So then you get a placement. I think the exams are offered two or three times in a year. So depending on when you get that confirmation of your credentialing, then you can sign up for the next exam that comes up that's available to you. Once you pass that exam and get your results, same thing happens again, you get put into an exam pool and you can sign up for your written exam, or sorry, your practical exam. Um, but again, the practical exam is the one that's going through that kind of turmoil right now. So I don't know what the end result will be on that. Um, and so, yeah, those are things that you'll have to do regardless of where you study in the world, as long as you, you know, if you go anywhere else in the world, you'd have to do the same process to come to Canada. Um, so it took, I think, in total six uh, six months for some people, up to a year for some people, just depending on when you hit those markers, when you get your stuff in, when you get the response and what exam you can sign up for. Um, so that's why I wish I'd worked for a year in Australia and just flew back to write those exams and then fly back to Australia to keep working rather than coming back here. And I was kind of working uh, kind of just, just whatever jobs in between. And it just really wasn't fulfilling because you're not working in the, in the job that you're trying to get into. And it just, yeah, that's kind of where I was at with it. Uh, yeah, did that answer the question? I hope whoever has that um, got their answer. <laughs> Looks like they did. Thanks. And thanks for sharing that advice. That's, yeah, that's really helpful. Um, 
Jesse, we've actually had a, a student, Jess, ask. She is an offer to Macquarie currently to the Cairo program, and she's curious to hear more about Macquarie student experience. Uh, what is it like there? Yeah, absolutely. So, like I said, when I first got here, COVID hit. And so I think I had like two weeks on campus, and then our whole first semester ended up being online. Um, as soon as things got like normal here, the university has so many events, um, clubs, they have this um, week before uni even starts called O week, which is orientation week. And it's basically a big party on the campus. So you can walk around and there's so many different like social groups or clubs um, that advertise themselves and you can go up to them and find out more information and stuff like that. And there's like um, different social clubs for physio students, for chiro students, for med students, like whatever degree you're studying. So they really definitely put an effort into making sure everybody does feel welcome. And I think Macquarie University especially has tons and tons of international students. Um, I personally didn't live on campus. I'm like a bit older um, than the rest of my cohort. Um, and I kind of had that university experience back in Canada when I did that. So I didn't have the desire to do it, but just walking around campus, um, they've actually just built a brand new kind of like um, social area for students to hang out. So there's a huge courtyard with tons of restaurants and cafes and stuff like and study areas and interactive rooms and stuff like that. So it's definitely a great um, university in terms of encouraging interaction within students and just the student life in general is like, it's very buzzing there all the time. So um, I, I, I think that if, if, I, if COVID didn't affect my degree so much, I would have had like way more social experiences just be like, even in the Cairo program when in our first year we had all of these events plans which ended up um, getting canceled of course, but just things like that. They really want their students to feel involved and welcome at the university. Um, and I really enjoy being there. Like it's, it's a beautiful university and yeah, I just, I really like it. Um, so Jess, if that answers your question, or if you have any more questions, um, just ask. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I don't see any more coming in about that. So it looks like you, you did a good job there, Jesse, <laughs> of, of answering. We have about 10 minutes left. So I'd say for everyone here, if there's anything burning question that you have in your mind that you really want to get an answer from from these three, throw it in the chat. And um, now is the time. I'm wondering, I'll, I'll jump back over to you, Francis. Um, in terms of your, I know you spoke a little bit to this, but what were your clinical experiences like during your MPT? Um, Tell us what those look like and what you thought of them. Oh my. my clinical experience is, so we have five weeks of five placement blocks, uh, five uh, times five weeks of placements. And in our first year, it's mainly all the theories. So all the topics that we're covering from neuro, um, cardiovascular, musculoskeletal, and different practices like cultural practices, interprofessional. Um, in the second year, it becomes more of all placements. So we have placement in the public system. We have a um, uh, MSK in the, the student clinic. We also have a rural placement opportunity. So we go out into the rural communities of South Australia. So small town, you'll be in the hospital there providing those service, uh, physiotherapy services in the hospital, getting to know a little bit of the cultural um, backgrounds of that community. So that's a great experience. I did that um, in my second to last placement. And you learn a little bit about different rural communities in, in South Australia. Uh, we also have um, neuro placements. So I did that in private practice, uh, neuro, and we had aged care as well. So more community-based uh, physiotherapy uh, services provided. So getting involved with home visits, getting involved with how to integrate um, the geriatric population back into the community after a discharge from the hospital and just trying to improve the quality of life through social um, communities as well. So it's very well rounded in terms of the clinical experiences you have at the MPT program at Flinders. Uh, there's one thing I probably didn't have was the um, pediatric population. So I didn't get much experiences from that, but I kind of expressed that wasn't really my interest to begin with. So I wanted to gear more towards MSK, neuro, 
and a little bit of the elder geriat geriatric population in my clinical experiences. So I think you gain a lot in the five weeks of the five placement blocks you're in and you'll grow to like a specific interest there eventually and then hopefully pursue that in your career. Amazing. And I noticed Bryce, you already answered this in the chat, but another question about working while studying. Um, Bryce, I think you mentioned that you hadn't, Francis, Jesse, did, have you worked at all? Uh, yeah, so I just answered in the in the um, chat, but I, like Bryce said, like the program's very full on. Um, I managed my first year, I didn't work just because I was, you know, getting used to all the changes and stuff. My second and currently in my final year, um, I work at a Cairo clinic two or three times a week. Um, thankfully, my boss there lets me study um, at the front desk and she's really helpful and, you know, with my exams and stuff. So it's a bit of a two in one kind of situation. But um, also, it, a lot of universities offer these note taker positions. So someone in my co cohort, cohort has a slight learning disability. She's a bit hard of hearing. So in lectures, she sometimes can miss certain um, information that's relayed to her. So I, through the university, applied as a note taker. So I get paid to submit my notes. And that's just like a no brainer. Like you're already taking notes anyways, you might as well submit them and get paid for them. So if that is an opportunity to you. It's a really easy way to get some extra cash and, you know, get paid for taking notes. So. Oh, I'm on mute. Yeah, no, good advice. And, um, and I see Francis, you just typed here, you worked in retail as well. Yeah. Yeah, just work part time or casual at a retail store just to get some extra pocket cash, but it worked well with my um, school hours as well as placement. So it's a lot of balancing um, time management and balancing your studies and working as well. I will also say that if you do come to Australia and you're in your master's or doctorate program, expect to not really have a social life. Like I know a lot of people <laughs> really wanna come here and you know see Australia and do all these things. But like, I remember when I said to all my friends back home moving to Australia, they're like, oh my god you're gonna do all these great things and Australia is beautiful and you do get the odd breaks and time to do the fun things but remember you're here for your education and it's a lot of work um so all of the traveling and seeing the sunshine and seeing the surf and all that can happen but it's don't underestimate the <laughs> academic load <laughs> Yeah, good advice. <laughs> Finding that balance, you know, when you can. Yeah. And um, for the three of you, someone had asked a question here about if you would recommend taking uh, chemistry or physics during your undergrad to prepare for physio or chiro. Any comments on that? Um, I would say if you don't have to uh, and you don't want to, then don't. <laughs> That'd be my opinion on it. I, I second that. I second. <laughs> Yeah, but I third that because by some miracle, I so I hate, hate, hate math and physics. I it's not my thing. Like I it makes me cry. Um, so I, by the grace of God, I don't know how I got into Cairo school without doing any math or physics. Um, like for Macquarie, it wasn't mandatory. They looked at your overall GPA um, from your undergrad degree. So thankfully i didn't have to do that and then when i got here in my first year there was one kind of radiographic physics class which was just understanding the physics of like an x-ray machine which was the worst thing ever but it was one semester and then it was over so it wasn't too bad right okay so it looks like him who asked that it looks like you're all right I think you mentioned it was tricky to fit it into your schedule. So um, sounds like you're good to go. Okay, so we only have a few minutes left here. Um, I do see one more question, maybe just to touch on this one last time, Bryce, about the ease of finding work back in Canada. Um, so in terms of returning back to Canada for work, there is a, uh, the public system is starving for physiotherapists. Um, the private system is also starving for physiotherapists. Um, so there's really no issues with finding work. Um, I would say is that you do want to make sure of when you are returning back to Canada, though, that you take your time and find a workplace that you're going to learn at 
and that you want to be at, that's going to be massive because there's tons of companies that are going to promise you the world and they're just not going to deliver it. And they basically just look at you as a way to build uh, insurance companies. So you need to make sure that whatever you do find for work when you come home, you're the one who's in demand, right? Your, your career is on the line with anything that you do as a, as a first contact practitioner. So just make sure that you're working at somewhere you want to be, because again, like I was saying, is that we're in high demand and there's, there's tons of jobs and clinics out there. So just make sure you find a good one that you have ample learning opportunity and someone that's going to look out for you. Because when you're out there and you're treating, you're alone. It's just you and that's it. There's no one there. No one's looking at your work. No one's questioning what you do. It's just you. So you need someone that you can communicate with and kind of mentor through that process so you can get some good feedback from people and maybe tell you what you're doing is wrong because some no one really tells you that. And it's when you get out there and you've been doing it for so long, you realize you've been doing a test the wrong way, um, which has happened to me. So you just it's better to just find someone and find somewhere that you want to stay. Uh, but yeah, there's lots of lots of opportunity in terms of work. Good insight. Um, and I'm just noticing the you guys have mentioned a few things about uh, funding. It looks like it's just come through to the panelists or the hosts here. So do you mind just verbalizing really quick about how the three of you secured funding for your programs? Um, so I um, got my funding through um, CIBC. Um, they do um, global money transfers. So I got my loan. I got a certain a designated amount each year. Um, and then you can transfer that into your Australian bank account to pay your tuition for your um, studies. And then for extra cash, I also applied through Student Aid BC and got cash through there. Um, so yeah, it was just, I think Bryce said the same thing. It was through a Canadian bank and then also the um, government of Canada as well. Perfect. Okay, so uh, last question, just for the three of you to kind of end it off on a, a fun note on our, our last two minutes. Um, what can you share like a favorite memory of your time in Australia? I know the two of you are still in Australia, but what was the what was the best part of your program if you had to pick one thing? Oh, I, oh, yeah, it's a hard question. <laughs> See, most fun? I took a camper van and drove up the coast from uh, the Gold Coast up into, uh, what was it, Townsville? Uh, up on the northeastern side. That was pretty crazy. There's a lot of uh, huge, massive dead kangaroos on the side of the highway everywhere. That's something I did not expect, and I will never forget that. Also, eating kangaroos is very popular. They have kangabangas, which are basically kangaroo sausages, very high in protein, low in fat. Great, <laughs> great exercise supplement. Kangaroo meat. Go ahead, Jesse. Um, I just would like to follow up on what Bryce said, dead kangaroos. Um, socially, I think the most fun I've had here, um, like I said, I've been so affected by COVID. So I've hardly like got the chance to like, I would love to go to Western Australia and I really want to go to the Gold Coast, which will happen eventually. Um, but we went on a, like, a, there's tons of great wineries in Australia. And we drove up um, to one of the wineries and like Bryce said, like dead kangaroos and I was the only Canadian in the car and we're, we're driving past and I freaked out and everyone's like, oh yeah, whatever. And for the next like five kilometers, I was like, did you just see how, you don't realize how big they are until you see them. It's almost terrifying. Um, but academically, I would say like currently right now being in clinic and actually seeing patients and stuff. And um, as silly as this sounds like suffering with your classmates, like knowing you're not drowning alone, like having the social and like moral support of your classmates and kind of laughing through the pain and just making these lifelong friendships is just, you can't compare it. Cool, my turn. Um, there's a few questions here I'd like to answer on the group chat first. Um, there's a question about how large are the international cohorts? Um, are you specifically, is it, if it's specifically to the program um, in MPT, so in my year, I was the only Canadian student. Um, so that's four years ago now. Um, and then the second year, I think there was about seven Canadian students. And then in the third year of Flinders taking Canadian students, I think it's about 10 plus. And I don't know where we're at now. That's all I kept track of. So there's definitely a growing internet Canadian um, student population in the MPT program. Overall in Flinders University, uh, there's a big international students. In my first year, I was the first Canadian student or two, there's two of us from Canada. And then 
as the years go on, more Canadian students are coming by. And now like I still um, in and out of the campus and like I'm in the gym and someone would, I wore like a Toronto Raptors shirt and it's like, are you from Canada? I'm like, yeah, like, oh, cool. There's more Canadians coming in the program now into, um, sorry, not just the program, into Flinder. So it's good to hear a familiar accent as well as like someone who knows like the logos of shirts that I'm wearing. Um, so there's definitely a growing Canadian population here at Flinders um, University. Another question here is, uh, for those of you who lived on off campus, what was the cost of living pretty adjustment uh, from Canada to Australia? So my first year I lived on campus. Um, so I found it was a great way to meet friends, um, especially since I didn't know anyone coming into Adelaide. Um, the cost of living on campus was a little bit more expensive in terms of rent compared to living off campus. So I lived in the village, which is a bit more of a, it's the middle ground between like renting your own place, but not like a dormitory. Um, so you're living with a bit more mature students, especially since I, I went here with a bit more matured age. Um, I didn't want to live in like a dormitory with a bit more undergrads. And so it was a bit more expensive. It was like 250 a week in terms of rent. And, and then you buy your groceries on top of that. But to say that like Adelaide is one of the most affordable cities in Australia. I think it was just ranked top five in most affordable cities in the world. And I think like working a part-time job did offset like my expenses and it made it pretty easy to adjust from Canada to Australia. Um, now, favorite memories. Um, I'd say there would probably be three categories. Um, I'll add on to the kangaroo one. I was going camping with a a uh, few friends and it was about what dusk like 6 p.m and we were going up and we had a small car it was like a toyota toyota yaris so small car but we hit a kangaroo so like that was quite an experience and then it was a small kangaroo but a small car big ca uh, kangaroo good thing there were no dents in the car um, so that was a pretty fun personal experience. Um, in terms of the university experience, um, I got to represent the university in their uni sport um, competition. So uni sport is like the division one of the America, of the NCAA, where different sports you get to represent your school. So I got to represent Flinders in basketball. So it was like during my holidays, I went a week away to a, a Gold Coast and played basketball, met, met different people from different universities playing different sports as well so that was a great experience um, and then in terms of academics I think it's definitely my placement experience uh, in the rural setting where you get so exposed to different cultures that I would have not thought I'd be exposed to and just living a like more simple quiet down life living from Toronto quite busy life uh, busy city and then Adelaide's like a step down from that and then if you think Adelaide is like quiet then you go even more quiet of the city so just adjusting to the change in lifestyle as a an experience there um, was an experience so those are my three fun memories of my time in Flinders amazing thanks so much Francis I'm aware that we're just over our time here we actually have a another session starting soon if anyone's interested in dentistry as well all right. No, kidding, kidding. Um, so I want to thank the three of you so much for tuning in, for providing all of this insight and your stories, and for everyone who joined for this session. I hope this is helpful. I'm sure it was. Um, if you do have any more questions, head on back to the Career Echo uh, chat rooms there. We've got Bond is there and Flinders and Macquarie and all of the other universities and they have got lots of answers and um, more, more tidbits to share about these programs. Uh, so Francis, Jesse, Bryce, thank you as always so much. That was really great. Thank you. No so problem. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Uh, no problem. Bye all.